Hi everyone, and welcome back to this comprehensive video series covering all things 3D modeling in Clip Studio Paint. If you haven't seen the previous videos in this series, please check them out so you can catch up with us. And with that being said, let's continue. Our next topic is going to be focusing on the models themselves, specifically the default models that Clip Studio actually provides you. As you can see on screen, we have a cube and a prism. And these are just two examples of what are called primitives. They're literally just the basic shapes that Clip Studio Paint provides you. Now these are really useful if you want to build a scene from scratch. A lot of the models that are on the asset store are quite realistic, detailed models. So if you want to do a more stylized comic or drawing, like a webcomic or more of a Western animation inspired style, primitives can be great because they can be used to block out your scenes. You can trace over them in your more cartoony style, but still have your scene in perspective and have the layout the same way every time. As you can see here, the object launcher is a little shorter than the typical 3D model launcher. All of these are the same except for this end one, which all it does is save the primitive into your materials library. So if you make a unique primitive by adding a pattern or a texture or have a certain shape, you can save it for later use. You can't save them together, which is annoying. I really hope Celsius adds that function in the future. However, there is a way to actually save the entire scene and I'll discuss that at a later time. The controls are exactly the same here. You've got your extendables boxes, rotation, scale, and movement. If we go down here to the wrench icon, the menu is going to be exactly the same as any other 3D model, except for the primitive menu and texture settings submenu. This is the same as this, <laughs> so if you again made a unique primitive you can save it for later use. Alright, so let's get a better view before we get into the next option. Okay, so the number of divisions is as it sounds. Right now we have six divisions. However, if we increase this, we're going to get a change in the shape. Octagon, and then we can also go to decagon, and each one of these will change it. As you can see, we only have one division this way, but if we increase it, the divisions will also increase. This is basically useful for alignment. So let's just say that this is a skyscraper. We have lines right here to draw windows nice and even. And let's just put that back to one. And the third one right here, what I'm thinking of straight away is a spider web. And I'm also thinking of those parameter graphs that you see in character books of manga. So they'll have like five points for strength, three for charisma, etc. The smallest you can go on the X is three, because if we had two sides, that would just be a 2D image. Cube, pentagon, and hexagon. Now, if you go into the primitives folder, you'll notice that there is no cylinder shape available. And that's simply because you use the prism to create one. If we go all the way to the end with this number, we've got a cylinder. It goes all the way to 64, not 20 like the others. And the basic principle is the less you have, the more angular the shape will be. And the more you have, the smoother it will be. So Y and Z don't affect the shape of the primitive, just the grid line. Next option is literally if you want to see these lines or not. And that's good if you just need the shape, you don't need the grid. The next option is pretty obvious, it's just the colour. I work in black and white most of the time so I don't really have a use for it. But just like the models that we discussed earlier, colour coding things in your scene may help you and it especially may help you if you're working with a team. That way everyone can discern what is happening on your page and who or what each thing is. So maybe you have a special prop and that prop will always be colour coded green, for example. And a certain character may always be blue. Hi guys, sorry for the interruption, but if you're enjoying this video and it's helping you, please give it a like and a share so others can find it. What helped you might help someone else. If you could also subscribe, that'd be great too. There'll be plenty of videos in this series, so click that big black button below so you don't miss a single one. 
If you have any questions, pop them down in the comment section below and I'll answer them as best I can. This right here is if you want to place a texture on your primitive, which I would say is one of the main purposes of primitives. If you made a texture yourself, you can open it here and you can also take from your material library and select. So let's just type in flowers, see what happens. Select this one. And there we go. As you can see, it goes completely transparent. So this is really great if you want to create something see-through. If you want to make the object solid, as in non-transparent, all you have to do is select opaque from this drop-down menu and there you go. So let's just get rid of this texture because we're going to move on to another very important feature of the primitives, which is the map. So you probably learned about this when you were very young in primary school. You just might not know that it actually applies to this now. A map is just the flattened out version of a 3D shape. I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like. We click export and save it to the computer wherever you want. I'm just using my desktop right now. Then we open it up in Clip Studio Paint, so separately, and you're going to see what it looks like. And this is what the prism map looks like. We've got the top of the shape here. This is the sides, like the round kind of sides, and this is the bottom. So if we put anything on here, we can import it back onto the shape. And I'll use an example. I'm just going to use a random pen and draw on here. And you want to do any editing, any drawing on the texture layer. See this one here. We need to get rid of the UV matte layer because the UV matte layer is just essentially the stencil or the guide. So if you keep the UV map, those lines will appear on your shape. So if you don't want that, you just have to click the eyeball next to it and it will disappear. We save it and then we go back to our primitive. We click here and we import it. And there we go. It appears. So primitives are really good for making props and not only backgrounds. So if your character has a prop and it like a sphere, it has patterns all over it and shapes. I don't know why I'm thinking of this right now, but I'm reminded of Disney's Treasure Planet with the uh, the sphere map that Jim has with the Apple of Eden from the Assassin's Creed series. Just, just a sphere with unique patterns on it. You can create a pattern on the map by exporting it. And that way, especially if you're doing consecutive art, which is just Webtoons comics with a story, your sphere prop is always going to have the exact same pattern, look the same in every panel, and it just has that uniformity, which is important in a comics in every aspect. So going back to our primitives, every one of them is going to have a different looking map because each shape is different. The cube is going to look a little different. Let's export it and open it up. And there we go. So that's what a cubes map looks like. Basically, if you printed that out, cut it up, you'd be able to fold it origami style and make a cube with a bit of tape or glue, which I remember doing in primary school, learning about shapes. The best thing about making your own texture with maps is that you can edit it. So let's draw a bunch of squiggly lines again. We get rid of the UV, save it, and then we'll go back to our cube and we will import it. This is a nice squiggly cube, but you know what? I want to change it. So what we can do is we can actually edit this. So we'll go back to our map file and I'm going to use red so we can actually see the difference. And we get rid of the UV again, save it. When we go back to the primitive menu, if we select this option, the reload option, boom, there we have it. It's uploaded or reloaded, rejigged the texture because the file itself, the map file has changed. So as long as you keep the map file saved somewhere on your computer, you can keep editing the map as much as you wish and update your primitives which I think yeah, that's such a cool feature. So you have a prop, maybe it changes across your story. Maybe at the beginning it only has a few lines and then all of a sudden as your character gets stronger or something, more patterns are added to it. The next menu is texture settings, meaning we're gonna actually have to have a texture. So let's get our flower texture back. And this time it's on the cube. Oh, we want the opacity straight up. So now we go onto texture settings. 
If you don't have any texture on your object, all of this will be grayed out. This just changes the size. And if you have this clicked, changing this will also change the height. So let's make it really small. So we got lots of it on there, lots of flowers and position, uh, width and height. So it's just changing the position of the texture on the actual object. Tiling, uh, if you don't know what tiling is, it's simply a way of laying out a pattern. So if I draw a simple square and then I make it a pattern and select tiling, it's going to repeat that square over and over again, just like tiles on a wall or on the floor. And that's it for this video. So please subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Uh, if you have any questions, pop them down in the comment section below and I'll answer them as best I can. Don't forget to like and share and thank you for watching. Bye.